some green and red stuff yes okay perfect so yeah so um thanks i am really excited to tell you about my work um i've been a post researcher now for a few years in the lab of wendell lima at, uh, ucsf so uh yeah in the next few minutes i'm gonna tell you about uh how we can modify cells to uh, treat cancer and the story that i want to tell you today it starts with immune cells. I'm pretty sure that by now you have heard a lot about T cells you know, and uh, how important they are to defend you about against virus and bacteria. Um, in particular, you know, uh, now that we are dealing with uh, coronavirus, like the new cells are uh, uh, have been in uh, the news and uh, in, in the mind of many researchers. But something that I want to mention is that the immune cells and in particular cytotoxic T cells are um, really nice model system to study complex cellular behaviors. And they can go around our bodies and search for uh, virus, bacteria, or any other threat. Uh, they perform this uh, very complex and sophisticated um, identification processes. And when uh, the T cells encounter something that is foreign and that they know that they have to uh, eliminate, then they can launch these very powerful uh, killing programs. Um, if you are interested about like these movies, you can go on uh, YouTube and look uh, through this uh, cytotoxic T cell on patrol video. Uh, there is more details on, on these T cells. And um, something that some researchers figured out a few years ago was that um, you can modify these T cells with synthetic receptors. You can use synthetic biology and um, put these receptors that are gonna make the T cell to identify particular cells on the body and eliminate them. And as you can imagine, you, those proteins could be landmarks of cancer. And in that way, you can redirect this uh, powerful cytotoxic activity of the T cells against cancer. However, some of the problems that uh, you may encounter when trying to use this approach to any type of cancer is that now they become really powerful. Like this approach now of modifying T cells is very good for leukemia and lymphoma. In the US is now approved uh, uh, for uh, pediatric leukemia, for adult leukemia. But if you try to use the same approach, let's say for breast cancer or ovarian cancer, other types of cancers, um, there is a problem. Now these T cells are too powerful. And, and, and the problem is that there is very, very few, um, it's called tumor specific proteins. No, what, what, in, what I mean by that is that these proteins that are expressed on the surface of the, the tumor cells are also present on regular tissue. Uh, for example, there is this protein called HER2. I, I mean, it doesn't matter the name at the moment, but it's widely expressed on breast cancer, for example. But uh, you also have that protein on your lungs and your heart, no? And um, as these um, movies show, if you try to engineer these uh, T cells against HER2, you kill both the tumors, but, all, but also the normal tissue, and, and that is not good. So something that I've uh, been working in the past few years is how you create this sigmoidal response where you only want to kill the cells that have high expression of uh, the protein of your interest, but you don't want to do anything to um, uh, the proteins that have, uh, the, sorry, the cells that have low levels of the same protein. So the, the goal of my project has been how to engineer this discrimination no, uh, uh, based on antigen density, uh, it's called. So what we want to actually engineer is the ability for these T cells to count the amount of protein that is expressed on the surface of a target cell and uh, make a decision. 
in this case, the decision is to kill if uh, there is high levels of the protein, but not to kill if there is low levels. Um, I need to introduce a little bit about like this uh, notch receptor. Uh, notch is, uh, it doesn't matter, this, these receptors are expressed on the surface of the cell. Um, via cell-cell contacts, you can start a specific transcription activation programs. Um, um, I invite you to go and look into detail uh, to these papers, but the idea here is that you can uh, replace the outside of this protein notch by a recognition domain against a protein of your choice, and also replace the intracellular portion of this notch protein for any transcription factor or something that is going to activate a new program. And in this case, um, uh, make uh, these new receptors to start uh, programs of your choice. Um, so the idea here to engineer these smart T cells was to um, build a small circuit where if you have this uh, synthetic receptor that I mentioned earlier that can start the production of another protein, and this other protein is the molecule that is going to activate the T cell, then um, you can then control the, the activity of the T cell. Uh, I recently, uh, we recently published this um, work um, in science. And um, if you are interested in, in the manuscript, please reach out. Uh, I will happy to share uh, the full manuscript. But the idea is uh, very simple. Um, the idea here is that you achieve the sigmoidal response by uh, putting this uh, first receptor that if it encounters low levels of um, uh, the antigen, then it's not going to produce a lot of the second molecule. Um, the, the affinity, so how it's sticky this receptor is to the, to the protein is very low so that um, if it encounters low levels, it doesn't produce the second molecule that is going to activate the T cell. But if the same receptor now encounters something that has high levels of the protein of your choice, then it's going to, because the frequency starts, as you can imagine, like now this receptor sees a lot of antigen or a protein. Um, so it's, it starts producing the second molecule that the second molecule is the one that is going to activate the T cell and it's going to start the killing. So in a way, this receptor works like a, a gate or, or something where, it dep depending on the amount of the protein that it sees, it will dial up uh, or down no? uh, the amount of the second molecule that it produces and uh, that results in um, the killing. Um, so I don't have time to go into all the details, but I just want to mention that if you do this approach of the circuit, you get these sigmoidal responses. Um, this, uh, this is a quantitation of using different target lines that have different levels of this protein and quantifying the amount of killing that you get when you put these uh, circuit T cells. Uh, and this is the, what happens with the regular uh, T cells, not that we had before where independent on how sticky these uh, receptors are, there is no discrimination. But maybe uh, you can see that better in these movies. So this is microscopy movies. You can culture these cells on 2D monolayers and show in the first line that if you have the regular you know, T cells, uh, you don't get discrimination. But if you have now the smart T cells, uh, you only kill the cells that have high levels, not that are cancer, but the, the cells that, are, uh, that express low levels of the other protein um, they continue growing. No? So in this way, you spare the, the normal tissues, but kill only the cancer. Um, just to conclude that we, we have done also some um, experiments where you can implant two tumors. No? Uh, in this mice, no? one that has high levels, another one that has low levels, and then show, you can measure after injecting your smart T-cells, you can measure the, the size of the tumors and show that uh, these tumors start growing, but then the, the ones that are high levels of, of the protein, uh, now uh, you eliminate them. So essentially you, you cure that tumor and the other tumor continues growing. Now the other tumor is the, the proxy for the growth of 
uh, a normal tissue, no, showing that uh, you you don't touch that other tumor, and and this is very uh, different from what happens if you put just the regular uh, T cells, no, non-smart T cells, both tumors get killed. Uh, just uh, yeah, the last part to conclude. Um, I mean, this field is really exciting. You can like do microscopy and watch these T cells infiltrate these tumors, no, and use different markers uh, to 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 tell. Okay, here is the tumor. Here is the T cells. Uh, these are the dead cells, no. Um, uh, so the, yeah, synthetic biology and in general immunology and cell engineering is a, is a very very exciting field. Uh, yeah, with that, I'd like to thank uh, everybody, you know, uh, the lab in which I am in, and my advisor, Wendell Lim, and my collaborators, and of course, the funding. I am happy to take any question if there is time.